I actually am not a shopper, and I'm not a clothes horse either, but I have purchased a lot of suits in my life. Some I get, and they are just fine. Others I try on, and there's just something that doesn't quite fit or look right. Now I have a decision to make. Do I buy it anyway and have it be a little less than perfect? Or do I not get it at all because there just is something that I don't like? How about a third option? Get the suit and have it tailored to fix whatever it is that I don't like. I actually prefer the last option. Often, things aren't perfect out of the box. Instead of foregoing them altogether, though, we can make adjustments, and that is often a really good solution. Most of the time, the default animations that we can select from the Animations Gallery or Dialog Box in PowerPoint will be just fine for our presentations as well. But sometimes, we need to do something with them in order for them to be the most effective. That's when the Animation Pane becomes useful. We can display the Animation Pane by going to the Animations tab, coming over to the Advanced Animation Group, and clicking or tapping the Animation Pane option. When it's displayed, the Animation Pane displays on the right-hand side of our screen. In it, we can see any of the elements that have already been animated. In this case, our title has been animated, and so has the chart. One of the first things that we can do very easily with the Animation Pane is we can reorder the animation. In other words, our title is animating first, and then the chart second. If for some reason we wanted to change that, we could simply grab a hold of one of these and drag it to a new position. Now the chart is first and the title is second. If we don't like drag and drop, there are also sets of buttons on the upper right-hand side of the pane where we can move things up and down. And we also can go up to the ribbon itself and use the move earlier and move later options. We're going to go ahead and move it back because we do want the title to animate before the chart. One of the things that is absolutely critical to understand is that when we're animating objects, we have to understand how to work with the objects. Just like sometimes we have clip art, and after we import the clip art, we can ungroup it to get to all of the individual elements of the clip art instead of just the whole thing as one picture, we can often do the same thing with elements on our slides. Smart art, and even charts, and text boxes can all be broken down into smaller elements than the whole. We have a chart, and right now this chart is being animated as a single item. But what if we wanted to draw attention to specific parts as we're discussing it? Well, we can do that, but what we need to do is animate it first. It has to be visible in our animation pane. Then we can use the drop down arrow for the element that we're looking at and choose Effect Options. This is going to open a small window in the middle of our screen. All of our animated objects will have an Effect tab. Here we can do things like adding sounds, but just like adding sounds with transitions, I personally don't think this is a good idea, so I don't use this option. We can choose to dim different elements after they're animated to help focus attention on the active part of the slide, and sometimes we can even work with animating text if we have a text box selected. All of our animated elements will also have a timing tab. Now we can do some things here as well, but most of them are also available on the ribbon. So we usually don't come all the way into this box just to work with timing. What we're interested in mostly right now is the very last tab. Different types of objects will have different option tabs. We might see a text options or smart art options, or in this case, we see one for chart animation options. Within the tab itself, we can then choose settings for how we can kind of break this down and work with its more component parts. Right now, we're animating the chart as one object but we could bring it in by series or by category. If we needed to be very detailed, we could even bring it in by each element or each data point in the series or the category. Just know that the more detail we go into, which is at the bottom, the longer the animation is going to take. And sometimes people will get bored if our animations take too long. So we're going to choose one in the middle. We're going to go ahead and do this one by category. For some types of charts, we also can animate the actual background of the chart before we bring in the data, and this is simply a check mark. With those selected, we'll say OK, and watch the screen when we do, because we'll see the animation play out on the screen. There's our chart, and it's bringing in each one of our categories one at a time. First lodging, then food, then transportation, and lastly entertainment. Depending on how closely you were looking, you may or may not have noticed, but this chart is no longer just animation number one, it's now animations one through six. 
Number one is actually our title. Two through six are each of the elements of our chart. The background is one. Lodging is two. Food is three. Transportation is the fourth. And lastly, entertainment. So we've broken this one chart down into different pieces. We can also see these different pieces in the animation pane itself. If we select just the chart five object, we can work with all of them at once. But with the little down arrow, we can also expand it. And we now have the ability to work with each independent part of this chart and animate it differently if we wanted to. Now we have to be careful because we want to be consistent. But we do now have the capability to work with the individual pieces. Remember that this type of thing can be done not only with charts, but also with smart art and even with text boxes themselves. That's how people make text builds, where one bullet point slides in at a time. Well, let's look at a couple more things that we can do using this wonderful animation pane. Let's say that we've decided that we really don't want our title to be animated. When the slide displays, the title can already be in place. Well, from our drop down edit menu, we can actually choose to remove any of the animations at any time. There we go, it's gone. And notice that the animations are now renumbered one through five instead of one through six. The other thing that we can do is we can preview different parts of our animation. Now, if we go ahead and deselect all of our different animations, we'll see that the button at the top of the animation pane says play all. And if we click or tap on it, it does just that. If we select one particular number, for example, we'll do number four, then notice that the button changes and says play from. So we don't have to see the whole thing, but we can basically watch the ending of the sequence. So if we select multiple pieces, in this case, we'll do two, three, and four by holding our control key. Then we see that the button actually says play selected. And now it's limited to just the selection. What we have accomplished by using the animation pane is breaking down the chart. And instead of having it animate as one large, possibly overwhelming chunk of information, we are now displaying it in bite-sized pieces, therefore reducing the potential for indigestion by our audience. Animations can be simple. Often, they should be simple. But when we want to do something specific, whether it's to drive a point home, to clarify a complex subject, or to focus attention on specific points, the animation pane allows us to truly customize the objects and how they animate on our slides. By breaking individual objects down into their component parts, and by elegantly combining numerous objects through their movement and emphasis on the slide, we can accomplish engaging and effective results.